Hello everybody, I'm Martin Humenberger from Naval Labs Europe and today I'm happy to share with you some of our work on visual localization. Naval Labs Europe in the French Alps, close to Grenoble, is part of Naval Corp, Korea's leading internet company active in search, entertainment, e-commerce, fintech and other fields of the digital life. Our research in Europe is organized in two groups. One is working on AI for robotics and the other on AI for digital services. Within these groups, we have teams of competences such as computer vision and machine learning. Let me now walk you through the outline of this presentation. I will start with introducing visual localization and its applications, followed by an overview of different methods that are currently used in research and in practice. Then I will introduce some of our work on global and local image features. I will present our image retrieval benchmark and finally, I will introduce our open source framework, Capture, and new indoor localization datasets. So let's get started. To explain the concept of visual localization, imagine you are here in this park and you would like to know where exactly you are. Naturally, you would take out your phone and the GPS would tell you that you are at Chateau de Sceaux, south of Paris. But sometimes GPS isn't enough. It's not sufficient for robot navigation, nor for autonomous driving, and not even for augmented reality. This is where visual localization comes into play. It addresses the problem of estimating the position of a camera using its images. We can not only estimate the XYZ coordinate location, such as with GPS, we can, al we can also estimate the orientation of the camera. And unlike GPS, it works indoors as well. These two videos show examples of how visual localization can be used in practice. What you see is a neighbor navigation app based on augmented reality. On the left-hand side, visual localization is used to navigate within a busy subway station where GPS doesn't work. Here, the narrow corridors and all the people pose challenges to the algorithms. On the right-hand side, visual localization is used outdoors where the changes in light and weather conditions are the biggest challenges. This video shows another example. Here, visual localization is used to compute the precise position of a car on the road. The colored points show the distinctive areas that were used to compute the position. Now let's move on to the methods of visual localization. To do this, let's step back a bit and think about what we need when we would like to navigate in an unknown environment. Usually, we need a map. Even this kind of map helps us humans. A computer needs a different map for localization. What this map looks like in detail depends on the algorithm that's supposed to use it. For visual localization, this map needs to somehow consist of images. These images can be collected with a handheld camera, a car, or even a robot. Then we need to know where exactly these images have been taken. We can do that with methods such as structure for motion, or we could use another, other sensors that are available. Finally, using the images and their poses, we can compute the map. We summarize this as mapping. Now, if we would like to know where this image was taken, we need to associate it somehow with the map and use this information to estimate the position. We summarize this as localization. This brings us to the challenges visual localization methods have to face. As mentioned before, in order to localize an image in a given environment, we have to compute some correspondences with, with a map. Let's say we have a map like this and this building is represented by only one image. Localizing an image like this one is easy because it basically looks exactly like the map image. But that's of course not always the case in real world applications. This image, for example, is taken under different light, light conditions. This contains significant occlusions. This one is taken from a different viewpoint and scale. And this one combines several of these challenges. The methods I will now introduce try to overcome these challenges in different ways. Let's start with structure-based visual localization. The goal is to localize an image, an input image, in a 3D map like this. This 3D map is a point cloud reconstruction of the target environment where each point has a position in 3D and a visual description. First, we extract so-called key points and visual descriptors for the input image. And since all points of the 3D map are associated with some descriptors as well, with such descriptors as well, we can match them to create 2D, 3D correspondences between the input image and the map. These correspondences are then used to compute the precise camera location. 
Before we move on to the next method, let me introduce the problem of image retrieval. Given a query image, we want to retrieve the most similar images out of a database. We can do that using compact image representations, or also called global image features. As you can already imagine, if poses are available for such database images, this can be very useful for visual localization. So let's do that. For example, if we want to localize this image in a very large map, we could first retrieve the most similar images from our database, which tells us that we only need to search in a specific region of the map. Then we can do the feature, matching, the feature ma matching in this area only, which saves a lot of computation time. Having the 2D, 3D matches, the location can be co computed the same as before. The next method I would like to mention is post-regression-based visual localization. Instead of a multi-step pipeline and a 3D map, we train a convolutional neural network, or CNN, using post-labeled images to do the localization for us. To localize an input image, we use our CNN to directly regress the camera pose. The last method I would like to introduce is scene coordinate regression. Similar to pose regression, we train a network that represents the 3D space of the environment. Then, instead of feature extraction matching, we directly regress, regress the 2D, 3D correspondences between the input image and the 3D space. The pose can then be computed as for structure-based methods. To summarize, structure-based methods perform very well on most datasets and the localization and, and the localization they give is high in accuracy. On the downside, these methods are difficult in very large environments because of memory consumption and processing time. This problem can be solved using image retrieval, but this comes with a strong dependency on retrieval quality. Camera pose regression methods are very interesting because they directly pro provide the pose, but the accuracy is quite low. Scene coordinate regression provides very accurate results on small scenes, but does not yet scale well for large scenes. One solution for this would be to divide the scene into smaller clusters. Let me now introduce some of our work on global and local features. I will start with APGEM. APGEM stands for Average Precision Generalized Mean Pooling, and the method was published in ICCV 2019. The models and code are available on our website. For deep image retrieval, Usually a CNN is used to extract a feature map that is aggregated into a compact fixed length representation. The representation is first projected with a fully connected layer and then L2 normalized so images can be efficiently compared with the dot product. The motivation of this work is that state-of-the-art methods in deep image retrieval rely on loss functions that minimize a proxy instead of the true metric used during model evaluation. We argue that optimizing for the true metric leads to significantly better results. So instead of using the triplet loss, which is not guaranteed to be aligned with the ranking method, with the ranking metric, we propose to directly minimize the average position for a large number of images. With this, we achieve very good results on the Paris and Oxford public benchmarks. The second work on image features I would like to present is R2D2, which stands for Repeatable and Reliable Detector and Descriptor. It was published in NeurIPS 2019, and the code and models of R2D2 are also available online. As you might know, the quality criteria, repeatability, which is often used to find good key points, tells us how well a key point can be detected at the same location across different viewpoints. R2D2 revisits the question of what is a good key point by introducing reliability as additional criteria for, for feature extraction. Reliability essentially tells us how well the key point is suited for the task of matching. Here is the, the architecture that we propose to estimate repeatability and reliability densely at each pixel. At the end, we only keep locations that are both reliable and repeatable. And repeatable. And here's how we train the network using image pairs with ground truth pixel correspondences. For repeatability, we maximize the cosine similarity between the detector responses in two corresponding patches. For joint reliability and descriptor loss, we maximize the average position computed for each query patch weighted by the estimated patch reliability. For more details about the losses and the training procedure, I invite you to look at the paper. Now let's come back to image retrieval and let me explain the roles that image retrieval can play in visual localization in more detail. Let's start with the query image and the set of post-labeled database images. 
in order to estimate the pose of an, of an image, we first retrieve the most similar images from the database. Then there are different strategies to compute the pose and I would like to mention three of them. First, we can directly approximate the pose using a linear combination of the retrieved poses. Second, we can compute the accurate pose by creating a small structure for motion model using the retrieved images, where we can then register the input image. Third, we can use a, a pre-computed 3D map and only consider areas of this map that are visible in the retrieved images. This allows fast and efficient computation even for very large scenes. Note that the last option can be considered as the mo most accurate, but it comes with the burden of constructing and maintaining the 3D map. As you can see, image retrieval can play an important role in, vis in visual localization and the type of global image representation is an important design choice. Even though image retrieval has been used several times for visual localization, there is little work on designing image representations specifically tailored to this task. In fact, global image representations that are often used in practice are trained for landmark retrieval or place recognition. However, the requirements of these tasks differ from the ones of visual localization. For example, if we retrieve a set of images for this query, the two images are relevant for landmark retrieval, but not for visual localization. They show the same landmark as the query, but don't contain overlapping areas. For visual localization, we are looking for images like the two on the right. They show the same landmark, and are taken from similar positions. However, image representations trained for landmark retrieval are still successfully used in practice. Nevertheless, we wanted to know how well the performance of landmark retrieval correlates with, vis with, with visual localization, so we designed a novel and unique, and unique benchmark to analyze that. We first evaluated multiple global feature types on the three tasks mentioned before, and then correlated these results with standard metrics from landmark retrieval and place recognition. For this, we used different public datasets, but here I only show the results on the autonomous driving dataset, Robot Car. In order to evaluate landmark retrieval, the literature suggests to use the metric precision at K, which measures the percentage of relevant images among the retrieved K images. Images are considered relevant if they are close to each other. The plots show the correlation between localization and landmark retrieval. The percentage of successfully localized images is on the y-axis, precision at k is on the x-axis. We observe linear correlation with pose approximation because this, tasks, this task benefits from high precision. We observe weak inverse linear correlation with pose estimation using a local map. This can be explained by the fact that in order to construct a local map, multiple images that show the same area are needed, and this is usually achieved when retrieving more images. Unfortunately, when retrieving more images, the precision goes down. We observe no correlation with pose estimation using a global map. This is mainly because for this task, usually one good image is enough. In order to evaluate place recognition, the literature suggests using the metric recall at K, which measures the percentage of query images with at least one relevant database image amongst the top K retrieved images. We use the same criteria for, for relevance like we did for landmark retrieval. This time, we observe no correlation with pose approximation. This means this task benefits from high precision, but not necessarily from high recall. We observe linear correlation with pose estimation using a local or global map, because both recall and these localization tasks benefit from more retrieved images. In summary, for pose approximation, global features that work well on landmark retrieval are, pre are preferred for pose estimation using structure for mo from motion maps, features for place recognition work best. More importantly, relevant images for localization need to rank high among the retrieved images. And this is not always the case for current approaches. So we can conclude that the, there is need for research on image retrieval approaches specifically tailored to visual localization. To foster such re research, our code and benchmark protocols are available online. The benchmark I presented is part of our open source tool toolbox for visual localization and structure for motion that we call Capture. Capture consists of a unified data format that facilitates the use of visual localization datasets. It can be used to store sensor as well as reconstruction data such as local or global features and matches. Because of that, it can easily be used to implement various processing pipelines. 
Finally, Capture is also a dataset downloader which provides popular datasets in ready-to-use Capture format. Let me now conclude the presentation with a pointer to a new dataset for indoor localization we, recent, we recently published at CVPR 2021. We introduced five new large-scale datasets for challenging real-world indoor environments. In detail, the datasets were captured in the Gangnam Metro Station in a large, and in a large department store in Seoul, South Korea. The proposed datasets provide dense image sampling with ground truth poses as well as accurate 3D models. To provide this, we developed a novel fully automated pipeline based on LIDAR SLAM and structure for motion to obtain ground truth poses. We also present detailed evaluations of modern visual localization methods of relevant algorithmic groups showing their limits on these challenging datasets. Structure-based methods perform best and there is room for improvement when using, when, when using regression-based methods. Here you can see how we used our capture platform to scan the public spaces. In order to estimate the platform poses, we developed a LiDAR SLAM pipeline based on post graph optimization. Initially, each recording has its own coordinate system. In order to unify them, we perform a, a, a merging process between graphs from each sequence. The result for Gangnam Station can be seen in this video. The last step is refinement of the poses and precise camera calibration using structure for motion. This video shows the reconstruction of the Gangnam Station dataset. As can be seen, the point cloud is very clean and preserves many details, which shows how accurate the refined poses are. The datasets are part of the popular online benchmark visuallocalization.net. Together with almost all other datasets of this benchmark, they are available in capture format. So if you would like to evaluate your own method on these datasets using the official test images, you can upload your results on the website and see how it performs in comparison to other methods. In addition, the datasets come with validation images for which we also provide ground truth poses. Finally, let me share some links where you can find the software and datasets I presented today. And if you have any questions, please reach out.